So we're going to start with part three, starting over in a new land. And um, we're going to use the character Jacob here. Now, for theological purpose, what we're doing through this series is just character study. So Pastor Dave took first week to talk about Abraham. He talked about uh, Priscilla and Aquila. Today, I'll talk about Jacob briefly. 25 minutes is not enough to talk about the life of Jacob. So what I'm going to do today is just a little snippet. And some of you might have seen my, my gifting is more, more evangelical. Um, I'm, not, I'm not Pastor Dave that literally works, you see. So mine is a bit different. So, but what I want to first do is, let us pray. And Father, we thank you. We give you praise for who you are. We thank you because you're a good God. You love us more than we can ever think of. We appreciate you, God. We thank you as your word come. I pray that people's heart be open to receive your word. I pray that you will illuminate the minds of people in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray also that your spirit will be here to bear witness to your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Before praying for this, and this is just a word of knowledge for somebody, for people who believes in the gift of the spirit, I take my time to pray sometimes, not just because... You want people to know God is in a place. It just proves that God is in a place. People who want empirical evidence. I was praying and God spoke to me about somebody here. Certain changes are happening in your life at the moment and you're controlling them. You're wanting to control them. They are good things. But you're worrying about them. Trying to control the things that happen. You don't want to let go. You're not giving God room in your life. Specifically a woman here. Good things are happening in your life. Changes but you're controlling them. You're wanting to know all the time, wanting to know. And, and God is saying, just let go because you're worrying too much. Worrying too much. He says in, in Matthew, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more? Your heavenly Father. Praise the Lord. I hope that is a word for somebody. And God bless you. Just let go. Trust God that he has the best for you. Amen. Amen. So as we talk about starting over in a new land, uh, we're looking at Jacob here. I want to kind of broaden the scope of or the definition of a new land because sometimes we think a new land is necessarily moving around from maybe the U.S. to the UAE or from the U.K. to, to, to the UAE. Uh, like I think about myself moving from Western Africa to the U.K., the U.K. here. But land here doesn't phys- it's not like physical all the time. For application purposes, I'll say, for example, you're a teacher here. You're used to teaching cycle three. All of a sudden, they took you to cycle one. It's a new land. <laughs> it is. Your husband and wife, you've been together. All of a sudden, a child comes. It's a new land. You cannot just wake up and do whatever you do. You are restricted. You now have to manage your time. It's a new land. Some of us here, our children are going to university. They've been under our authority, under our umbrella. We see what they do. We know what they do. Now you won't see them anymore for a while. It's a new land for you. It's a new dimension for you. Amen? So the definition of land here does not literally. It can be figurative. It can be literal. So you'll see me shift from one to the other. Amen? Amen. God will help us. Now we look at the life of Jacob here. Now, I don't want to bore us with the story of Jacob. We pick the story of the life of Jacob is summarized from Genesis 27 all the way down through to Genesis 49. So you could see that that's about 22 chapters. And 20 minutes is not enough to talk about 22 chapters of a man. But we want to see Jacob's life. There are a lot of lessons we can glean from Jacob's life. Raising a family, how you raise your children, how you relate to them, and everything like that, all is summarized in Jacob's life. But we want to take, first of all, uh, let's see Second Peter 1. 4. It says, by which we have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of his divine nature. One thing we will see in Jacob's life is that God is faithful. God is a person, or God, God keeps his covenant, he keeps his promises to the very end. Amen? So let's look at Jacob. Uh, we take a first one from Genesis 28. So if you're with, you can go down for me if you want. You can go. Genesis 28. Now, verse 10 says, Now Jacob 
went out of Beersheba and went towards Haran. 28. So I'll just give some highlights of Jacob's life here. Now he's deceived his father. He's collected his brother's, brother's birthright. For, for those of us that are of African descent, you will understand what birthright means of the first child, what it is. And I see some of my life in Jacob's life because, first of all, I'm a first child. I come from a polygamous home. Okay, and birthright are very, very important. Very, very important in, in the African culture. Before your father wants to die, sometimes he lays his hand and pray over you and all the stuff like that. It is vital. But here we see a man, Jacob. God has spoken up to his mother before, before his birth, that this child will be who he will be. But we see Rebecca here trying to control things in the sense that manipulated Isaac, and now Jacob is fleeing, is running for his life. So he needs a fresh start. Family relationship has broken down. Parents love their children, but in an unhealthy way. Having grown up in such a family and contradiction, Jacob is confused. He lives with nothing. Amen. Some of us, we moved here because we looked at things in our lives and said, okay, maybe financially things aren't working. I need to move. Maybe relationally you moved because you want to throw up everything and say, no, I want to leave that behind. I want to move to a new place. I want to start over. I want to start over freshly. This is Jacob. He needed a fresh start. His life was in crisis. And sometimes we're like that. We come, we put up this facade, look at your nice dress, but inside of you is this turmoil boiling. And you're saying, God, can I have a fresh start? Can things be all over for me again? Can, can I just put an end to this and open a new page in my life? So we see how crisis, how problems shakes Jacob away. But look at this. Look at this. Genesis 28, verse 11. It says, so he came to a certain place. So in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this turbulence, in this midst of this predicament, he comes to a certain place. Sometimes God wants to speak to us, but in the busyness of our schedule, we don't listen. You have the TV on, you have all this on all the time, but Jacob came to a certain place. Sometimes the end of a man is the beginning of where God starts. When we come to a certain place, we've struggled, we've toiled, we've done everything within our human capacity, and we stop there. And God brings us to a certain place. And as you're in that place, God shows himself. And let's read verse, let's continue. Verse 11 says, And he took all night, and if you go down, the, he dreamt, and this is the way God revealed himself to him there, and top of the heaven, and there the angels of God were descending and ascending. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, this is God for you. This is the God we serve. It wasn't Jacob looking for God. God was been looking for him all this while. This, is, this talks about grace of God. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Perhaps you're here. You've been running away. God has been nudging you through circumstances and situations in your life, trying to track you down, trying to bring you to himself, and you've been running. God has been looking for you all this while. Because before he was born, God spoke about his future. So God has been there all this while. The Bible says he is the one that sticks closer than a brother. In our problems, we might look, oh, God is not here. Oh, God, when will you answer me? But the... <laughs> You see, he dreamt the angels descend. He just shows the activities of God, even when we don't see them. God is moving on our behalf, even when we don't see them. Because we are so of a finite mind that we want God to work in certain ways. And if God don't fit the boss, then God is not there. But God is always there. Amen. Amen. God is always there. The grace of God. But also, you see here, and the Lord said, and 
I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, and the land which you lie in, I will give to your descendants. You see here, before now, all Jacob has had was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But at this point of his life, he became, he, he encountered God on a personal level. So it's not enough. God has no grandchildren. Have you ever thought about that? There's no, grand, he does, there's no grandchildren. You have to have that personal relationship with God. He said, I am the God who appeared to your father, Abraham. So at this point, Jacob encountered the God we're talking about. So God, if you're here, you've not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. All you've heard of is the God of this and the God of that. But you've not encountered the God yourself. This is an opportunity. There is an opportunity for you today. It might be because of the circumstance you're going through, God has brought you here. It might be your friends have invited you here. But at some point or the other, you have to encounter God yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. And this is what, what, what happened to me uh, when I was growing up, growing up in an idol background and everything like that. And my father had everything. Had all you want to think of. Money, there was everything there. He had working for an oil company, had everything. But when I had problems with my knee and everything... My father has been doing came to an end. Because that was the time God wanted to bring him and say, young man, mister, there is a God who lives in the heavens and overrules the affairs of men. Amen. When money could not help me, they say, you, son, will walk with clutches all, all his life. It doesn't matter how much you have today. This is the position. But my father said, what else can I do? He said, Bess, what else can I do for you? I have crossed all the rivers, sacrificed all the idols I can. You see me every year and year, sacrifice animals to this. But why this God, this God do not protect? I told my dad, I said, God, dad, look, everything you've done, you've invested, the, the God and the idols you put underneath your bed, they do not save. And that day, I cried out to God. I said, God, if you help me, if you prove to my dad, I read Exodus 15, 26, that you are God who heals and you make me walk again and you make me just prove to medical science that there is something greater than this. So today, I play football. I do everything I can. I walk and do all that. Just because of one encounter with God. Yours might not be like that. Yours might not be dramatic. But one thing you will understand that as we move from one place to the other, there is one encounter, and that encounter changes your life. It changes your life. You will talk about your testimony. There is no way you invite me to preach or speak that you will not hear me talk about healing. That is how I encountered God. And I believe he does the same today. Amen. So God is still here. Amen. Now, if we go, and the other time Jacob moved again, if we go further, this time around he moved to from Aram to, to Canaan. So the story fast forward now. He's gone to Laban. He's been there. Now you will liken this to, <laughs> I put some things there that we can relate to. <laughs> some teachers are laughing here. <laughs> Amen. When the threshold, the workload becomes too much. In the UAE terms, you will say just Jacob did a runner. <laughs> he parked his car in Boadi Mall and ran up. Amen. So there were relational issues. So as we move from one place, either as we're moving from in terms of land or we're moving figuratively, there will be relational issues. Yes? So you could say relational issues with his employer, labor. It was challenges there. His children begin to say, he's taking all our blessing. We want to live. And what did God do? God spoke to him again and he moved. Now, when we hear from God, how do we carry out that instruction? Because God told him to move, to leave her, to leave there and go back to Canaan. But when God speaks to you, how do you carry it out practically without violating God's principles? Amen? 
That is the, the practical aspect of it. God might speak to you about a brother, about a sister, but the way you minister that grace or whatever God is speaking to you has to be with exaltation, edification, and comfort. Amen. You cannot just go and say it. You have to, the gospel is the same, but the way you package it is different. Amen. The gospel is the same, but the way you package it is different. You need to see me speaking in Africa this summer. I, I wouldn't speak like this because they want you to wear a suit and all the stuff like that. So it's a different way. It's the same gospel. <laughs> Amen. So problem with his employer doing it wrong. So when we hear from God, God speaks to you about your family, about somebody in the house of God, or about your children. The way you minister it is, has to be with love. Amen. He has to exhort the person. He has to bring comfort. And he has to be for what? Edification. And God spoke to you that this person you see is living in sin, for example. And how do you approach that brother and say, God is telling me this? You don't just go and say, sister, you're a sinner and that, that. No, you don't. That's not love. <laughs> That's not love. It's not. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go further. I told you I'm be different than Pastor Dave. <laughs> okay, now, fast forward, he moves to Shechem, from Shechem. So now, he moved to Canaan. In between, he met his brother Esau. Remember the story? He met his brother Esau. But that tells us there is a fundamental principle behind that. That Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that he will reap. Praise the Lord. Yeah, but also... You can see what God does in the heart of a man. This is 20 years down the line. He's meeting his brother. But Jacob being who he is, the, mean, the name Jacob means deceiver and the one who grabs somebody's heel. He prayed to God. They said, God, I'm going to meet my brother now. After praying, look at what he did in the Bible. You can read that in Genesis, in Genesis 35 and 34. He divided his load. He divided them into various sections. So he put one in front put one there. What is he trying to do? He's prayed to God already. He's trying to scheme. He's saying that if Esau decides to, to take my stuff, if he takes that other one, takes the third, second one, before he gets to me, I would have escaped. This is the same prayer. Many of us do that sometimes in our own lives. We pray to God about something, but also have our own agenda. So you use God as plan B. You already know what you want to do, but just to fulfill our righteousness, uh, my brother, pray for me. Huh? We'll pray for you. You've prayed, but you also have a plan B. You're thinking, if God does not work, this. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you cannot use God as plan B. God is the only plan. <laughs> it's the only plan. My father had all the plans he had. But what did he bring him to? Nothing. Nothing. Did he bring him anywhere? He will bring things. He will sacrifice things. My mother also the same. This is talking about walking with God. I told them that. I said, Mom, if God is God, I will serve him. If, if it's not, whatever. My mom told me, Best, you know your father is from a polygamous home. And you are the eldest. Your life is at risk. I'm doing everything I can for you as a mother to protect you. If you don't follow me to this, this year we're going to this annual sacrifice and stuff. I said, if I don't follow you, mom, and anything happens to me, and let's, let's see the God who is alive. And that the God of those idols, my uncle, who is the, who's the tribal leader of that area, will tell you, it will call Mr. Best, you're very, very stubborn. <laughs> you're very, very stubborn. And it's the same. Most of the meetings we have family, they kick me out. They say, you, and this your God, go. Live here. But what am I trying to say here is that God is who he is. He's faithful. He keeps his word. So as we move from one place, as you're moving from one challenge to the other, God is faithful. Amen. 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 Now finally, let's go to the other one. Now, he moves from here to Egypt. I'm going to try and wrap this up now. Now, what is the reason why he moved? There was famine. There was, he needed to see his son Joseph. But you need to see the life of Jacob as it's changed from Genesis 28 
to this point. In Genesis 46 verse 1, just Jacob presented his plans to God Almighty. This is the Jacob before now. Who wouldn't do that? He was running away. But he came to a point where he knew that God, if you don't go with me to this. But also, he looked at where he was going. His father had been told, don't go to Egypt. Now he was thinking, how is it that Egypt is in the plan of God? He said, go to Canaan, not Egypt. How did you feel at first when you moved to the UAE or when you tell people back home you're moving to the UAE? What do they think? <laughs> Amen. Amen. They'll tell you UAE is not in the plan, but it is in the plan. It is in the plan. Okay, for the sake of time, I just want to give you some practical things if you go down quickly and we'll pray. So, some practical applications, yes? As we move from one place to the other, as we're moving from one, one land to the other, as we're moving from one area to the other, we work in a different place, different area. I'm learning to speak Arabic because in front of me is Jordanian. By the side of me is an Egyptian. Here is a Syrian. I'm the only person that speaks English. And you need to see as that goes. It's a new land for me. I have to deal with that daily. So we take time to pray for God's wisdom. Pray for God's wisdom. Look for people. Look for people who have been in the land who have gone through challenges before. Don't keep quiet. Look for people. There are new people in our midst. Those of us that have been here for longer, invite them for a meal. Invite them for a coffee. Talk to them about this land. Talk to them about your experiences. And try to answer some questions. Join a small group. Um, Sister Helly mentioned that. Join a small group. Because it is, in a large church like this, it's hard to connect. Your small group is your network. You go to all the time, you meet and you pray. And you, you, in a big church, it's a bit difficult for pastor to minister to everybody. But when you have small group leaders and small group, it is very, very, very good. Now, find your gifting and serve in one capacity or the other. Uh, another thing as we move over, find time for the things you enjoy. Amen. It's not work, 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 work. Find time for the things you enjoy. Family time, your hobbies, find time for that. And God will bless you in, in, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray. I want to round up now. And, but I want to give you an opportunity. I said 25 minutes is not enough to look at the life of Jacob. Okay? It's not enough. Perhaps you've moved from one place to the other. Perhaps certain things in your life at the moment are just troubling you. But also you know in your heart that you've not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This Jesus I talk about, who, heals my, who healed my leg, you don't know him. This Jesus I'm talking about that brings life and hope and peace and stability, you don't know him. This Jesus whose name is greater, higher, above idols, idolatry, bigger, stronger than strongholds, addictions and stuff, you don't know him. You've not encountered him like, like Jacob. You've not come to Bethel. You've not had the Bethel experience. There's an opportunity for you to do that today. Amen. I'm going to pray for us. And if you want to do that, please, I'll be in front. Pastor Dave will be in front. Elders and counselors will be here to share the grace of God with you, to share the peace of God. I want to pray for you. Why don't you stand with me? Amen. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you because you're a good, good father. I pray for your people today, whatever challenges they're going through, as they move from one challenge, one land to the other, one place to the other, I pray that, Father Lord, you will surround them with your protection. One thing was key in Jacob's life. You were there to protect him all the time. So I pray for your age of protection around those ones, God. I pray that these ones, will, people will see your light in them and be drawn to your kingdom. I pray that, Father God, that we experience the peace that passes all understanding this week. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.